Welcome back to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. Our topic today, concussions. Parents across the country are making decisions based on medical reports tying contact sports, especially football, to concussions. In a moment, we'll give you some guidance and talk to a renowned doctor. But first, Ellen Kaloje talked to some concerned parents. Thank you, Larry. Some people are calling it a crisis in football. Fewer kids around the country are playing the sport. And in fact, here in New Jersey, a few high schools have had to kill their varsity program because there just aren't enough kids to field a team. And the number one concern, parents are worried about safety. I was afraid that he would take a, a bad hit. He would get hit in the head. He could possibly have a concussion, break a bone. Kristen Fallon had so many concerns when her son JP first started playing quarterback in the Pop Warner League. She says she still worries every single time he puts on the uniform, but she feels he's safer than ever because his coaches know exactly what to do if there's even the slightest chance of a player having a concussion. It's much different now. We're all we're all trained to understand what a concussion looks like. Um, all of my concussion, all of my coaches, excuse me, are uh, are trained to go through the concussion protocol. Uh, we don't take any chances anymore. I mean, it's just not just not something we do anymore. That is comforting to a lot of parents, but the number of kids around the country playing football is still falling. The Wall Street Journal reports that since 2008, the number of kids playing football between the ages of six and 18 has fallen 5.4 percent nationally. And specifically in New Jersey, the number of kids playing fell to 24,872 last year. That's the lowest level since 2003, when 24,144 players took the field. But coach Mike Delabar says he's confident he and other coaches do exactly what's needed to cut down on injuries. It makes me feel more secure as I run the program. It also makes the parents feel more comfortable that, you know, they're getting instructed properly. The coaches are all certified and they know how to instruct properly. Pop Warner was the first national youth organization to put a concussion policy in place that requires any player be immediately removed because of any head injury. And every coach must go through the Heads Up program. That teaches safer tackling and blocking techniques. Coaches at many high schools around the country and in New Jersey also go through this kind of specialized training. But a lot of parents still don't want their child to play. The Public Religion Research Institute found that out of 1,000 Americans surveyed, one-third would not allow their children to play competitive football. That's up almost 10 percent from last year. However, Kristen Fallon is not one of them. And you've seen the change, you know, you even the way they approach it or even the way they react to someone getting hurt on the field. There's more attention to it. There's more checking of the symptoms. Now, the head of Central Jersey's Pop Warner League says his numbers in this area have stabilized and he expects them to keep rising over the next few years. Now, he believes that's a direct result of all the safety measures that have been put into place. Reporting for Jersey Matters, I'm Ellen Kaloje. Thanks so much for doing this. There is a, a real concern uh, among schools, among parents about concussions because suddenly, because of the cases in the NFL, it's all over the news. How concerned should, should parents be? How, how concerned should schools be? We should be concerned. Every year, high school athletes have 300,000 concussions. That's a problem. And these head injuries and concussions have ignited a firestorm amongst the public. And this is what we want. We want to raise the awareness. We want to start looking at this. How do we prevent it? How do we make these impact sports safer for our children? But safer is what you're saying. You're not saying they should not play. Right, no, no. See, first of all, sports have a great um, role in our children's lives. They teach them how to be competitive. They teach them how to be in groups. They have physical activity. And these are things we want for our children, but we don't want to put them in harm's way. So how do we manage this? It's important that we don't just say, let's look at the good stuff, but like completely ignore and not um, discern that there are harms with this. Would you allow a child to play football? I don't believe in tackling at this young age. Their, ch their brains are developing. So do I want to imp do I want to put them in harm's way where there may be an injury to their brain when it's developing? No, I don't. Well, let's go step through step for parents that now heard that and go, oh my God, my child's playing football. What can they do to make their child safer? Well, there's a number of different things. First of all, you should be involved with the coaches and those in the football teams and other impact sports and not just football. We want to make sure that we understand ice hockey is a high impact sport. 
girls soccer is one of the is the third leading cause of concussions in this country amongst athlete, um, high school athletes. So we want to really look at these different sports. We want to be able to talk to our coaches. We want to see what they're what's implemented for concussions. How are they trying to prevent this? How are they trying to diagnose this earlier? Do you believe at this point that most high schools, most coaches, most parents even know what to look for? No, I don't. No, I don't. What do they look for? Well, first of all, every concussion can be different. There is a misconception that in order to have a concussion, you have to have a loss of consciousness. And in fact, most of the time, there is no loss of consciousness that occurs. It may just be that they feel dizzy or lightheaded. They may have some nausea or they might be confused. They may not know the day or the time or what's exactly going on. There might be some amnesia around the events that occurred right around that time. So some of that can be very subtle. What exactly should we be doing? to diminish the concussion injuries and to be able to pinpoint concussions when they happen? Well, first of all, no coach, no parent, no helmet, no t can completely eliminate the risk of a concussion. When we have impact, there's always a, a possibility that there can be an injury to the brain. So that needs to be first stated. But that being said, we can be more aware that concussions do occur the rate that they occur. And there are different types of steps. I learned that um, Coaches are now standing behind tackling dummies and they're putting up fingers, like three or four, and they're asking the players to sit there and, and identify you know, how many fingers are put up so they can assess if there has been some type of a head injury. And that's a step in the right direction. And then there's also new rules such as targeting that have been implemented for college. And while it's controversial, it's to limit using um, your body to aggressively tackle somebody into their head and neck area, which can increase the risk of injury. Do we need a medical professional at every game? It is something that should be considered. Every option should be on the table when it comes to our children, which is our greatest legacy. We are putting them in harm's way with the sport, but because of a greater purpose. We want them to be active. We want to encourage them to play with others and be competitive, but at what level? And so these are the types of things that need to be asked. Are parents okay with allowing you know, properly trained people who may not be professionals, maybe like there might be, um, the coaches can be aware of it. There may be a parents who understand what to look for. Are those the people who should do it? Or do they need to call in a nurse, a physician assistant, or a doctor to be at every game? Those are good questions. I, I jumped far ahead, I understand that. And I, I do wanna get to what a concussion is mm -hmm. and how the signs of a concussion and, and what the treatment are and what they can do. But before I do that, my, my son who plays football had to go through something called a baseline mm -hmm. where he sat in front of a computer and just had to answer questions. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I, I, I guess I kind of understand the reason for it, but I'd love you to explain to me why they have that as a baseline, what that could mean later on, and if that's important. So it's telling the parents ahead of time there are risks associated with it, and it's always nice to have a baseline. For example, just like with the heart, you know, they like to get EKGs or they like to screen them for um, some of those very rare conditions of the heart where somebody might have a sudden cardiac arrest. These are, baselines always allow us to compare what was before to what happens after. It's frightening. The baseline itself was frightening when my son took it because they're asking asking him questions, really easy questions, they're asking him questions, and then I realized they're doing this because if he suffers a concussion or two, he may not be able to answer those questions as well. Is that is that what happens? Exactly, and that's what the purpose is. You are um, baseline screening to see what level are they starting at. Have they had a concussion or two or three? Because as we know, the more concussions you have, the more likely they're supposed, there's gonna be permanent injury. So by doing this, they're alerting the parent. They're telling the child that there are um, severe consequences to having brain injuries. Uh, as I said, I jumped far ahead. I want to get what a concussion is, what causes a concussion, what it can do to you, and, and, and the treatments for it, when Jersey Matters continues with physician Nina Radcliffe.